All right, mate. Uh, my name is Julian Mason, and I teach self-protection. We are in Manchester today, and we're going to do a bus combative seminar. So we're basically going to learn to kick ass inside of a bus. Make the bitch get up! Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing martial arts since four years old. Uh, my father was in the French Special Forces and I've been working with him uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, providing tactical and combat training for various uh, governmental units and uh, quite a lot of interesting people. Uh, I've started with Japanese martial arts. I've, uh, you know, I've really done a lot of different research on a lot of different martial arts. And I'm like, boom, boom, you know, and then I attack the eyes. Yeah, I attack the eyes to stand up and get a position of higher ground. So very important. Like I said, here we're at the same height. Now, as soon as I do that, I'm in a position of higher ground now. Yeah, where I'm locked here now, I can attack. Yeah, I can attack and do stuff from here. So what we're gonna do now? We're just gonna work on that. We're gonna work at trapping his hands and going for the headbutt. Yeah, use the crown of your head, the hard part of your skull. And he attacks me from there. You see there? I got the eye, so I can index one eye. So I got that that fit, that thumb in the eye. Getting there. I'm going to put some type of fence with the hands and say, listen mate, and what I want to do from here, from the tip from here, what I want to do is get on my feet as soon as possible, get in a position of higher ground. So if I'm here and I see that he's, uh, he's back, I can go straight away and, you know, use something. So I'm going to use that, for example, and kick. I'm going to kick and now I'm up. Now I can do something from there. Punch him in the groin, yeah? Then punch him in the groin, his head is going to come down. Punch him in the groin, you know, you got, you got the uppercut. You can got an elbow, you got, you know, you got so many stuff you can do from there, yeah? As you can see here, you're quite compact. It's hard to move, especially when you've got somebody next to you. You have that cognitive shift where you're not using your language brain anymore, you're using your fighting brain, yeah? Fighting brain is the limbic system, okay? Your talking brain is what you're using right now, you're going to listen to it. Yeah? It's your cognitive, prefrontal lobe, neocortex, yeah? what you use every day. Uh, I love everything, you know, anything that I can uh, add to my game, uh, I will. So, yeah, that's, that's with the background in, uh, in terms of uh, martial arts. So today we are here to learn to fight from a seated position inside of a bus. So it's ideal for people that take transports, people that are afraid of, uh, you know, taking transports on their own. So there's going to be a lot of different scenarios and simulations that we're going to do today. <laughs> you actually access your weapon and you start attacking them. Yeah? These are rubber knives so you can go for it. It doesn't feel very nice but it's still rubber, it's not going to kill anyone. Yeah? So you can go for it. <laughs> you trap them against the window. Okay? You access your blade and you start attacking. And they have to go through you and get out. Uh, mainly learn to generate power from a seated position, so striking from restriction and all these sort of things. If I'm here, yeah, and I want to generate power, I want to push on that on that foot to go in the direction where I'm going. So I'm there, boom, and I'm there, yeah, boom, there, from here, yeah, boom, yeah. So I'm pushing. Uh, I'm going to speak about situational awareness. I'm going to speak about uh, how to develop uh, good observational skills and how to spot pre-threat indicators uh, before the shit hits the fan, basically. So today we've got different people. Some of them are uh, long-date martial artists. Some of them have uh, done martial arts for more than 30 years. Some of them are already teaching. Um, i got uh, different people. we got, uh, you know, we got people of different levels, really. So I'm going to adapt today. Now I'm talking and you're listening, you're using your, your frontal, prefrontal lobe, you know, the, the conscious thinking part of your brain. When you're fighting, you switch to your limbic system, so you're not thinking anymore. It's, it's a completely different way of being, it's a different state of consciousness, maybe. You're going to sit today, you're going to be adrenalized, you're going to see what comes out. What comes out and what you think is going to come out are two very different things. I'm looking forward to put the content out there, you know, to put as much content as I can for people. And, uh, you know, we're going to have some nice, 
scenario training and pressure testing at the end, which is going to give people the opportunity to see what they can do when they're adrenalized, which is what combatants is about, you know, knowing what you can do under fight duress, which is pain, stress, disorientation, tunnel vision, you know, decrease of decision making ability and the cognitive shift that happens in the brain when you're fighting for your life, basically. We're not doing anything too complex today. It's going to be very, very simple stuff that are uh, uh, very easily retainable by the limbic system. Uh, so mainly gross motor skills. So no complex fine motor skills like you find in some martial arts. This is going to be quite... Uh, this is going to be quite simple in terms of uh, body mechanics, what we're going to do today. Very simple stuff like palm strike, elbowing, headbutting, biting, gouging, you know, things like that. We're going to work primary tools. What are primary tools? It's like in boxing, you got a jab, yeah? The jab is a primary tool, something that you use to create openings. And then when you create an opening, you can use your secondary tool, which is the money shot, yeah? For now, we're just going to work on primary tools, okay? We're gonna work them on the pad. So if you have the pad here, that's the face. I could be talking here and have that, that back fist, for example. So on there I got that back fist, which would be a back fist to the face, yeah? So I got this, yeah? I got striking the ground and striking the face, yeah? So these, for now, the two things that I want you to work on, yeah? So the person is gonna sit next to you, and I need you to have some type of situational control here with your hands halfway up, and strike down to the ground and strike to the face. You got that? Go! Yes, it is! Two! Yes, it is! The person comes and they have like a predatory movement, they start insulting you, getting in your face, and you know that something is wrong at that moment. First of all, like that, but when we start arguing, I start turning myself and you see, so I turn myself a bit and I put my hands up so I can talk to him. And also so my hands are really close to his, to his face. Do you know what I mean? Only close so that I can cover up and I can attack from here. If my hands are halfway up and I'm here, I can cover up, yeah? So this is one thing, situational control. Have your hands halfway up, palms up, but not fist, because that means I want to fight. That means let's should be calm down. In front of these CCTVs here, yeah? I'm looking like the guy who's trying to defuse the situation. I'm not looking like the guy who's trying to create a fight. He's looking aggressive, I'm not, I'm like, listen to me, calm down, and if you decide to strike, yeah. I'm ready to react here. And using our voice as well, so there's going to be a lot of principles, because what combatives are, combatives are a set of uh, concept, principle-based skills that have proven to work under extreme adrenal stress and fight the rest. So, you know, we're going to try all that shit today and see if it works. Why do you think it's important for people to learn these skills? Uh, it's very important nowadays because of the world we live in, unfortunately. It's a very beautiful world if you know where to look, if you look at the core of all things. You know, I'm quite a spiritual guy, so I, I love nature. Uh, I know that life is beautiful and, you know, uh, this planet is a beautiful place. But unfortunately, you know, people's ego uh, kind of trash everything and, and it became a bit of a dangerous place at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of stabbing going on, in, uh, especially even here in Manchester. You know, it happened last week and a couple of weeks ago in the town centre. So this type of thing happened. Uh, people do get assaulted, people do get attacked, women do get assaulted, uh, even children do get assaulted. So yeah, I believe that it's very important for people to learn to deal with that. You know, and to not only uh, learn to fight, but uh, get ready mentally, emotionally and physically you know, to deal with uh, the worst case scenario which is deadly force. Unfortunately you don't always choose but sometimes people will offer you deadly force and when they do the only way to deal with that is to have uh, the same type of response. The first part of what we're going to do here, like I said, we're going to speak about situational awareness and the street smart concept. There are things that are very important when you get inside a space is to know where the exit is. That's the very first thing, because just in case of emergency, you should be able to have an exit. This seats are the best because I can see what's happening here, and when I'm looking there, I've got my peripheral field of vision, so I've got the central peripheral, near central, uh, mid central, and far peripheral field of vision. Carlos, move your head. I can see your head moving. I don't have to look. Yeah? So now somebody else gets in the bus. 
I can see them entering the bush. Okay. Now, if I have to stand up really fast, I can do it as well because I've got the space to do it. If you guys want to stand up really fast, it's going to be quite hard, especially if you're trapped against the window and somebody else. And knowing how to spot uh, anomalies in people's behaviour, which is the most important stuff, you know. If you are waiting uh, until somebody gets uh, sits next to you and pulls the blade out, you know, usually your situational awareness is not that great. You know, you want to have good observational skills and being able to spot uh, pre-threat indicators. We're looking at a blade threat inside the bus. Yeah, like I said, situational awareness first. I'm going to look at the person's body language and physiology when he or she gets in the bus. Yeah, to try and pick up on some some type of pre-threat indicator. I'm giving him already that, that body language that, you know, that I'm aggressive, maybe I want some problem. And so, if he's aware, yeah, which I advise you to be aware, yeah, I don't have to look at him, but you see if his hands are moving, I could be, I could be there. You see already what happened here? An obscurement, yeah? Obscurement. Yeah, yeah. 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 I take my hand, now he can't see my hand and I'm here. I could be here, you know, all of a sudden, I could be here, you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't necessarily want everybody to see, I could be here, yeah. I have that line of kidney here. Yeah. Yeah. I could be like that, yeah? Uh, obviously, people that try and mug you, yeah? Will try and do it in a way that other people are not going to see it, so they're going to try to be discreet, yeah? You don't want to be seen. You're not going to be like that in front of everybody. Predator will choose an easy prey. Predator, a lion, it's not gonna go and hunt another lion most of the time. They're gonna hunt gazelle, zebras, yeah? So do not look like a, like a gazelle. Don't look like a zebra or you're gonna get punched. I'll give you three different types of body language. I get inside that bus, I get my ticket, I'm there, I'm here, and I'm doing my own thing, I've got my ticket, I put it here, and I'm neutral, and eventually I'm gonna sit there. What was that body language? It was quite neutral. I'll give you another body language now. Yeah? That would be me. I'm there the first thing because I have a little scan because I want to see what's happening. Yeah, Because I've got that type of mentality. I want to know who is inside the bus. I want to know how many men, how many women roughly. I want to see. I see Carlos, bald headed guy at the, at the end there. I know that's a guy who can fight even from, from the way that he looks. I know these guys are big guys as well. I know that, you know, he's very tiny, man. Like, you know? So, no, that type of body language where I'm here, I'm looking there, I'm doing my thing, I'm putting my ticket, I'm there, I look confident, and I'm walking, I'm sitting, but I don't look aggressive, no? And I'll give you another type of body language. The guy who's just there, he's, he's pissed off now, he's, 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 he's like that, now he's looking at people like that. Different types of body language there, yeah? What would you say? The first person was very neutral, the second person is more confident, and the third person is actually quite aggressive. You wouldn't want this person to sit next to you, would you? After that, we're going to run on to um, attribute development. We're going to do quite a lot of power to learn to generate power with different instruments. And after that, we're going to do a few simulations and a few scenarios. All of, all of you, I need you to be predatory. I need you to get there, give the eyes, you start talking shit. You can use profanity, you can swear, you can do all that stuff. And you're trying to intimidate people, yeah, as you get in there. You can either go there and talk shit and grab them, try and grab them, you can go there. I want you to go there and just attack it. Try and grab, try and push, try and shove, try and punch, try and attack. Right at the end, uh, we will have a few stress tests where we're gonna uh, kit people, we're gonna put people with a padded gear on, a head guard and body protector, okay? yeah, drone yeah. guard and gloves, and uh, we're gonna go as close as possible to full contact as, we, as, as people want to. I will encourage people to go full contact, but you know, different people, different backgrounds, different levels, so everybody's gonna take up their own, uh, their own pace, basically. Again. 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 Yeah? I'm holding my head behind to kind of protect my brain stem. Yeah? And then I grab that elbow 
right next to me here and I'm going to put that surface on the top of it here for extra protection, okay? Punch with that hand for example. Yes! Again. Yes! Again. Yes! See? It's the type of situation where I'm there but he attacks me first. So down there, we just talk about it, man. And all of a sudden you attack. <laughs> Yeah? What should I have done to stop that from happening? I could have jammed him. So if I'm here again, now you attack me. Now I'm attacking him. I'm jamming him here. You see? So now I've got all these stuff. I've got this. Oh. Now I can attack him. I don't want to be caught in here for right now. Yeah, Just attack me. Well, now I'm getting attacked. Yeah? I don't want that to happen. He's got a position of higher ground. He attacks. I'm here. And I'm here. And I'm coming up. I'm there. Yeah, I went and smashed the elbow right into his face as I was defending. Yeah. So I cover up, and at the same time I strike. I counter, and I strike at the same time. Yeah. So it's a weapon. It's not only a way to protect yourself. Use your elbows as well. So we're here. Yeah. <laughs> See what happened? First one, yes. just cover up. Second one, cover up, jump, gain position of higher ground somehow. Continue. Go for the escape. Get up. Chill, chill, mate. Chill, chill. chill. <laughs> chill. <laughs> chill. <laughs> One last time. Chill. Chill the <laughs> Okay, go! Go! If anybody was interested in watching this video, how can they contact you for training? Uh, well, i got a Facebook page which is called Adrenaline Combatives. Uh, i got a Facebook group that's called Adrenaline Combatives. Uh, i got a YouTube channel that's called Adrenaline Combatives. Uh, the website is not ready yet, but it will be eventually, and it will be called AdrenalineCombatives.com. So, yeah. What, um, what we do here today in terms of training, in terms of where I um, got the influence from for this type of training, well, uh, there are a few people that really influenced my work and uh, the main, I would say that the main character that influenced my work is uh, Lee Morrison from uh, Urban Combatives uh, that really changed the way that I see uh, uh, fighting and the way, the, the way that I train uh, combat training and combatives. So, a lot of stuff that we're going to do today is inspired from his work and uh, just, you know, just to give credit where they are due, uh, he's, a, he's a great person, he's made me evolve a lot, so I'm very grateful for that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be quite something. <laughs>